opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Between science and ignorance, there is filler. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Paranormal Filler. I'm your host, Wes Forsyth, and my guest tonight is Beth Luscombe. She's from way, way far away, but we'll get into that. Paranormal Filler is sponsored by Ken Boggle's House of Cards, tarotbyken.com. And I'm... I'm uh, I'm pleased to announce tonight, if you're listening live, some of you caught it on Twitter, I am trying, once again, Paranormal Filler TV. That means during the live broadcast, there is a video presentation of me sitting here smoking cigarettes and occasionally rolling my eyes. Quick shout out to my Twitter follower of the week, Tracy Moore. Pixie Baby 1972 on Twitter. If you hear this, send me a message and you will get a free subscription at paranormalfiller.com. And finally, I want to give a shout out to broadcast partner animalx.net. That's something I haven't been doing on the show for a while. Is uh, my broadcast partners are incredible with their support and advertising for the show and a do not get the recognition that they deserve, but partner is animalx.net reporting the strange, the unusual, the paranormal. Check out their website. Oh, and if you tune in to the Paranormal TV video presentation, you will get to see tonight my winter beard. Hey, Beth, welcome to the show. Hello. And uh, incidentally, everybody, yes, that is a power saw that you hear in the background. Uh, yes. I just, that was the last person that annoyed me, <laughs> just she, being sawed away. <laughs> Beth decided that the night that we're doing the show, or the day, because it's day where she is, uh, was the perfect time to build a deck. So um, we got that going for us. Um, and we're speaking to Beth in the future. Uh, w what time is it there where you're at? It is probably just gone uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Monday afternoon, so uh, hence the reason why there are, there are actually people out there uh, reconstructing the deck at home I have here. So we've got the builders out there, but yes, so we're, I'm speaking to you from the future. Yes, and um, see, that's what I do, Beth. You don't know it, but I check your Twitter feed every day when I get up because I figure if you've been tweeting, the world still exists. So I don't worry about um, the end of the world and that kind of stuff. Now, what, what, while we're on the topic, before we even get to the paranormal crap, what is it with these weird-ass time zones that you all have over there? Uh, yes, um, believe it or not, um, we have a very weird-ass time, time zone thing happening here in Australia. 
there is a um, in the middle of Australia we have um, a time zone that is half an hour difference from the east coast and two and a half hours difference from the west coast. Did they and just, believe it or not, hmm? did they just like pick a time? It, it was almost like it, Australia uh, tries to be very fair. Our, our capital is in between two of the biggest cities because they didn't want to pick one or the other. So they just made it in the middle to make everybody happy. And I think that's kind of where this kind of went as well. So it's just it's, it's very unique. And I actually think there's a couple of other places. I think there may be only be about two or three different places in the world that actually have this uh, half hour difference. So it isn't just unique to Australia. It's unique enough for me. Um, it, it blew me away when you posted the times that you would be on. I'm like, one thirty? What the <laughs> hell? Uh, but anyway, so uh, now, now I, I missed part of the introduction. I was going to introduce you as the lady that does the test calls on Skype. I love <laughs> your accent, and it is you are just. Um, so so lovely to hear. But you do have to say one thing for me. I was listening to one of your podcasts, and I want to hear you say Los Angeles. Oh, no, really? Yes. <laughs> Los Angeles. I love that. <laughs> I love your accent. <laughs> yeah, great. Now, that's uh, – and do you – when you come to Kentucky – everybody, I met uh, Beth last year at Scarefest. So – uh, she was back this year, and uh, she's already got it on her calendar for next year. I love seeing you once a year, Beth. Uh, wish it could be more, but uh, be that as it may. The um, do, do you have a problem when you come over here with our accent? Because now you, the Australian accent, as long as you stay out of some of those weird phrases that I see on TV, you all have a beautiful, beautiful accent. But here in Kentucky, we have some real winners wondering about <laughs> it's so true i i find it it's interesting um it's when i spend time at Scarefest and it's particularly in kentucky that um it's it's weird when you're listening to other people's accents and then someone say for instance you're at a restaurant and someone says right so what, what will you have ma'am and I'm like oh i'll just have a glass of water and i just feel like i might as well get the trumpets out and it sounds all a bit hoity-toity and a bit different you just you just really stick out when you start to speak because you're so used to hearing everybody else so it, it does feel very strange at first you kind of you're just used to hearing everyone's normal and then when i talk i'm suddenly not normal so it's well, no i'm not normal anyway but just from an accent perspective <laughs> so it's, yeah it does feel very strange now have you ever uh, presented at scarefest given one of your speeches um i've applied this year i was on the panel discussion last year with uh, christopher st booth and brian kano and um a couple of other awesome people as well and we um and i know that you were uh, the mc for that particular one weren't you my dear friend accidentally i walked by and <laughs> gave brian cano a hard time and next thing i know i'm uh, the moderator for a discussion that and you all did not need me uh, no no we were that good <laughs> <laughs> the uh now the reason i asked first of all when you did your application did you make sure that you put on there that your ass was going to be there anyway yes i did okay that's, I did. That is that's always a big plus when they see the words Australia pop up <laughs> on the application. Uh, but uh, the reason I was asking is I'm going to try to make your presentation because I would listen to you read from the phone book. Oh, thank you. I can do grocery lists as well. <laughs> I'll chuck that in for you. <laughs> and, and that sounds like I'm buttering you up, but I listen to um, parts of a few of your podcasts. And I am going to give you major kudos right now. I listened to uh, the one particular that I listened to quite a bit of. You were doing a, of course, it wasn't live when I heard it, but you were. Do, uh, it was done on location, on an investigation. You actually managed to make that interesting. I have never heard that done before. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. I'm really glad. Well, as we say in Kentucky, paranormal investigating, as a rule, is dry as a popcorn fart and the <laughs> <laughs> i love that term <laughs> and what it is I, I could not do it i could not do what you what i heard you do on there because you described what you were doing what you were experiencing and what i and personally my own favorite part of it 
was that you also had a handle on your own perception bias. The things that would trick you, you were ready for them, and you admitted that, hey, that shadow caught me off guard, but when I look around, I see X, and it could equal Y. I love the way you did that. Oh, thank you. It's It literally is just emptying out my head onto into a microphone and, and going through what does go through my head when I investigate. And I know that there are other investigators that think similarly, but not everyone wants to really share that there could might be, you know, a, a reasonable explanation for something or maybe something we haven't been able to pinpoint yet. You know, like a couple of things that happened while we were investigating that I still haven't been able to quite, you know, sort of debunk just yet. So I'm glad you really enjoyed that. It's, it's, it is, it's a, it's, I, I love being able to try and make it in a way where you're sitting there in the room next to me and we're experiencing this and we're going through what's just happened. And, and, you know, pulling it apart. And uh, that's the kind of journey I love to take people on with these podcasts. You, I, it really was impressive. And like I said, I like, of course, now part of your background here, I saw you have something about mental health on your resume. Mm-hmm. Um, so you understand a lot about how the mind works and about how two different people can see the same thing, experience the same thing, and interpret it completely different. Absolutely. And that that all comes from, you know, consistently asking that question, why? Why did did someone see this and the other person didn't? Or why? You know, for me, I've never, and I put my hand up and say it, I've never caught what is considered an EVP. Never. And I've been in the same room as other people. They've used the same, you know, um, similar microphones and, and, and raw audio recordings, all sorts of stuff. And they've got some really interesting phenomena that seems to have been captured. But yet for me, nothing. And I'm like, why? <laughs> so, And that's that kind of exploration. You start to think, well, why is this situation in this particular building different to the last place I went at? And the phenomena is different there again. And you've got you're investigating with the same people. And, and that kind of starts you know, discovering more. So yes, it's understanding our beautiful grey matter that we have and um, how in fact it's built to, for us to survive more than anything else and how that can actually be a hindrance sometimes when it comes to investigating. I am. Um, so on your own recorder, uh, you don't, you've never had an EVP that you felt was solid enough to stick your name on. Is that what you're telling me? Or you just don't get anything. I think, well, if you ask my husband, he says, I probably don't shut up long enough. <laughs> but <laughs> he goes, you got to let them talk. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. Um, it's, I think it's, it's literally um, the recordings I had, I, ha- I literally have nothing. And I'm very, very um, strict with what I consider to be something that could be anomalous. Um, so I'm very my my level of oh no that's not that needs it needs to be shouting at me and having that recorded in order for me to go yeah I think I might have something so it could be a bit of both or maybe I just don't shut up long enough and I actually am very strict with my my sort of level of of what I would consider something even re- I even hesitate using the word evidence I think that's a re- it's, ugh, I think capturing something that's that's unusual is probably more uh, the term that I would use I I I prefer the word data. Mm, All mm, the crap we collect is data. Very few things that I've seen collected in the field, to me, rise to the level of evidence. Uh, So I'm I'm definitely on board with you there. Mm. Let's we're going to go ahead and take our first commercial break, everybody. You're listening to Paranormal Filler. My guest is Beth Lascum. Hello friends, are you exhausted with life? Resent your children? Maybe your husband is cheating on you. Get yourself a tarot reading with Ken Boggle. He can provide you with the clarity, guidance, and answers you need. That's tarotbyken.com. He makes things seem less shitty. And welcome back to Paranormal Filler. Uh, now, you, your group, or I'm, I'm assuming this is a group, uh, Access Paranormal. I'm assuming that's not just you. Actually, it is. 
No, just it is. Me. It's just you. Yes. <laughs> Surprise, well, you had some videos. <laughs> you had some videos and sh- crap that had other people on it. So I thought maybe you. But okay. So Access Paranormal is Beth. Yes, it is purely my my passion, my drive. Um, I started about oh, probably about I think four or five years ago. It must be five years ago now. Geez, um, and it was just a website for paranormal investigators in Australia because there's all these great websites for the States um, and in the UK, but there was nothing for Australia. So I just thought, you know what, I'm not the only person that wants to get more involved. You know, I'd love to be able to create somewhere where people can find events and workshops or, you know, where other teams are because we're a big piece of land, you know, 90% of our population is on the coast. So if you want to go and investigate with somebody, they're not kind of just down the road. And there goes the saw from outside with the deck. Anyways, <laughs> and um, so I just thought I'd love to be able to, to to create something that people can find this information for them to get started. And then, of course, the next step was to learning more. And that's where my, my passion really has taken off. And that that's that's never sort of left me, really. So and it's literally just boomed from there. It's just grown, grown. Now, the, the website that we're talking about, everyone, um, her website is Access paranormal.com nothing tricky about the spelling access paranormal.com and a, a lot of good information there and uh, we'll get to the blog here in a minute I, there was some post in the blog that i really liked but i did want to give you a pl- ongoing plug right there thank you i am a little surprised that there wasn't more built-in resources in australia the reason being is uh Paranormal seems to be a really big thing over there. Um, I know that when I check my numbers, I I get as many numbers uh, sometimes on my uh, from from Australia and, and New Zealand and that area as I do from the states uh, as far as um, archive listening and some of the TV shows. I know they do well over there. Some of them have tried to cross over here. Why was it? Do you think that Australia? I'm gonna say you relate to the game because I bet now things have picked up. Mm. I think for us, it's definitely a population thing. I think that I mean, there are more cars in California than there are people in Australia, so that gives you a bit of an idea um, of the, the numbers wise. And because of that, things take longer to grow. Um, So uh, especially when it comes to trying to investigate certain locations, um, you can often drive four or five hours to one location and then, you know, drive back the next day type thing. Hopefully people have enough sleep beforehand, please, please. But, um, you know, I think it's definitely a population thing. Um, uh, The reason why is things here just take longer to um, run, take longer to to uptake the interest um, and ideas. But as you've said and mentioned, and I think in the last year or two, it really has picked up a lot quicker. We've had a lot of um, guests, international guests come over as well, showing interest too, which is really good. That that actually helps generate more interest with, with people and investigators as well. So we're not just on this far away land, away from most of the world. You know, people are actually making the journey out here to um, interact with other people who are equally as interested. Now let's um let's do the the standard interview. What <laughs> triggered your interest in the paranormal? What got you interested personally? Gosh, um, I'm going to give a really standard answer at first. It's always been there, Wes. I've always loved it, and it's true. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's so true. I've always loved it. I've always been fascinated by the fact that something could possibly move on its own and we haven't found a possible explanation yet that has intrigued me and also how some people are able to understand or pick up information from another person that they they would never have known it previously so that always even from a very young age that that sort of side of life really really intrigued me and i 
I was born to two very, very sceptical parents. So goodness knows where it came from. It was just there. Um, I had an experience um, when I was 16 in my, in my dad's old, old, beautiful house. Um, it was about 150 years old in, a, in a, um, a suburb called York, which is in Western Australia. So it's right at the other end of Australia. Beautiful old house. And um, we were asleep, um, my sister and I, in the same room because he's only recently bought it, but he'd actually painted the place. Um, and it was, you know, this, this is nine bedrooms type place. It's beautiful old thing. They were doing it up as a bed and breakfast, which luckily it still is today. Um, he doesn't own it now, which is a bit of a shame. It's, ugh, I love old buildings. I think that's also where that comes from. And we were lying asleep and we heard what sounded like something dragging across the wall, but sliding down. And I thought, well, that's a bit interesting. You know, a picture must have fallen down. So on the, obviously at breakfast the next day, we're saying, oh, you know, dad, like, well, you know, we heard something slide down. Do you know what where the picture was? You know, we should put it up. You know, is it broken? Blah, blah, blah. And he just sort of looked at us and said, there shouldn't be any pictures up. We've just painted the place. There's there's no pictures. We're, we're waiting for the paint to dry. So we went, okay. So, of course, I wish now that I had my more of an investigator hat on and just gone and had a look around to see if it was something that had fallen off or or anything like that, but that place certainly had a certain presence to it, especially in the basement. Oh, the basement was was where the original house was, and so you've got a fireplace there, and and it was built half underground for purely for the fact that the Australian summer is just stupidly hot in the country out there, but also for um, what they used to say, the hostile Aborigines, so they would actually be a sort of semi-protected if it was half underground. So, yeah, and it's a, it's a beautiful building, but that's pretty much where it all started, and it just just kind of tumbled from there and then I moved to the UK and, and I was in my heaven because it was just so much bigger over there and you could actually get involved it was interactive you could be a part of an investigation instead of just wondering if this phenomenon might happen or not or how it could happen so yeah very lucky okay but now as a now you're a grounded person I've read enough of your 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 stuff to know that you're grounded and you said your parents were very skeptical how was the UK dear because I've seen oh. some real, pardon the expression, listeners, I've seen some real bullshit come out <laughs> of that other ocean. Mm. I think there's lots of bullshit from lots of people's oceans. I think um, it depends if what doing varying degree. There's some from Australia. There's some from the states. We've got all oh, different yeah. levels. I mean, yeah, there, there, there's plenty to go around. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it, it, it does seem... From the post that I see on Twitter and the evidence that I see posted um, and and the way they look at how skeptical should you be about phenomena, that they yeah. are much more ready to embrace the paranormal answer than most of my crowd and i and i hang with some real moon bats don't get me wrong and i and i probably in a lot of ways i fall into that category i don't, I don't claim to be a skeptic but i do feel like i if i don't always reach for that skeptical explanation i do try to to acknowledge it in other words i i try to filter my experience through that i don't see that a lot from over there i think it's interesting because in the uk a lot of the old societies started there so you've got the ghost club that was one of the first um you know um there's a society of psychical research obviously all different types of um societies that had actually started originally from there so the real you know sort of hardcore questioning had started from there so it's interesting that you you find that there is a little bit of a uh, sort of a more of a, a willingness to accept something being paranormal as there uh, it could also be again it could be a population thing i mean a lot more people doing it there may appear to be a lot of people accepting it more possibly but um from my experience i think it's a, a very 50 50 and i um, again maybe it's the loon bags i hang out with so you know it's i think um it depends the kind of people that you surround yourself with and, and the information that you get from them. Maybe that could also be it as well. Maybe from what you're seeing is, is more so from a social media perspective. But from my perspective, I um, I would have to disagree. I think there's a really good level of um, scepticism. And I, I think, again, I, I 
hesitate using skeptic because I think that's been changed over the years. I don't, the skeptic in the traditional sense as opposed to someone saying, I'm a skeptic, oh, but this happened to me and I can't explain it. <laughs> well, that means you're not a skeptic. So it's just, skeptic uh, is, yeah. Common story. I I don't believe in ghosts, but let me tell you my ghost story. Yeah, yes, I, I get yes. that a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I do like the word skeptic because if you drill down to the real meaning of it, mm. you can be a skeptic and still be a believer. Um, now, when you tune it all out, then you go into that cynic range, and a lot of people that say, I'm a skeptic. No, you're a cynic. It doesn't matter what happens. You're not going to believe it, and uh, yeah. there's, there's there are different, nothing. There are different type, yeah, different type of believer. There's believers, and then there's believers. And uh, ironically, believers and skeptics, uh, if they're titled, are very much the same. They're just opposite ends of the spectrum. I've always believed you've got to be a certain level of grey. Be in the middle. You know, you'll sway one way or the other sometimes because we're human. But being a, a, a grey <laughs> investigator is the best type. There's a best type. You've got to be open, but not so open your brain falls out. Do... um. So, as far as the people that collect around you in Australia, um, you feel like pretty average as far as their standards of, we'll use that term evidence, but what, what it, um, what they um, proclaim to be at least possibly paranormal, they're pretty much on, it's, you feel like it's an even spectrum. Yeah, it's it's pretty much on par with a lot of um, investigators around the world. And that's why I, I feel so lucky to have investigated in the USA, um, you know, to have investigated extensively in the UK and also here. So I've, I've got a really good uh, sounding board and idea of all the different ways and, and beliefs and, and techniques that people use. And it is all fairly similar. So we're not that much different in that regard. I think there's a newer... Um, breed of investigator coming out recently I think in the last couple of years some people really want to keep going on with their passion and other people are quite happy to attend events which is great because that you know that's that's so much for the community as well but yeah I think it's it's like with most you know sort of Facebook's a very core area that a lot of people meet and be able to share information and it's very much the similar sort of stuff where look I've, I've taken a photo or I've I've captured uh, I've got this kind of audio file sound and I'm not sure what it is or and it's very similar sort of level of um, of asking and the level of, of quality of that as well is still very much across the board with states as well as Australia and I think also the UK what is it that keeps your interest in the field I, I'm still set back that you personally have not captured you know that piece of evidence that's made you go oh my god i've got you know whatever you all say over there um have you Gosh. Is, what what personally is it the experiences that you've had what drives your passion in the field it's it has to be it's it you're right and you've hit the nail on the head where it is about experience there is experiences i've had where i haven't been able to find its rational explanation yet i've i've seen chalk fly off floorboards i've seen tables walk towards me um you know i've seen people affected uh who i know quite well very suddenly and then come out of it um information that people have picked up on something that nobody knew at the time that's not found you know, on the internet or public record something very bizarre for, for that to be then verified later like years later um things like this that happen things th something is happening there is something going on what it is we don't know and i it sounds i'm trying to be as g-rated as i can to a point but it's you know using the term chasing the dragon it's you know that unfortunately it's a term that's used for someone who has a first hit of heroin and is constantly trying to find that first hit it almost feels a little bit like that <laughs> um you know you, you're you've, you've experienced something and you're constantly trying to find or, or experience it or, or have an answer for that and that to me is is what keeps me going I, I i live and breathe it i really do much to my husband's annoyance i live and breathe it <laughs> before we go to commercial break now i want to add to that though okay now my weakness my personal weakness in the field has been that even though now i still have a passion for the experience for the sharing i absolutely cannot stand evidence review 
and the thought oh, of yes. and the pride and I'm thinking if I was Beth and I had never gotten a really good EVP after all the freaking hours and hours and hours of audio and video, <laughs> blah, 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 um, would I still even carry the passion for the experience? Yeah, how do you, how do you get absolutely. Past that? <laughs> <laughs> I do because it's like there's a needle in this haystack, and I got to find it. <laughs> That's why it's probably because I haven't been able to yet. You know, if and if there is a time where it ever does happen, every man and his dog's going to know about it. <laughs> so it's just whether it happens or not, we will never know. But it is. It's the drive to find it, and yeah, it it takes patience. It takes patience going through everything and the hours and hours of it, and yeah. But um, yeah, definitely, it's, it's the passion is always there to try and and discover, and and you know maybe you know it, there could be something else going on when it comes to me, and opposed to someone else. We'll never know. I just got to keep finding it, kind of keep searching. <laughs> Quick commercial break, everyone. You're listening to Paranormal Filler. Gone Off Topic, where each week your host, Wes Forsyth, explores the unusual, the weird. Um, that's the same thing. The strange. Still the same thing. The bizarre. What the hell, dude? And the controversial. Okay, yeah, there's that. Nothing is off limits. Well, maybe. Nothing is out of bounds when you've gone off topic. Gone Off Topic. Sunday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern paranormalfiller.com So you've been doing this probably about the same amount of time I have. But now you do obviously you obviously do a little bit of traveling, the fact that you came over here and I'm like I think Missouri's like the farthest I've been. Um, <laughs> Iowa, Iowa, yeah, Iowa is about the farthest I've been. The uh, observing the people in the field, the other people. What do you consider? Is there is there a right direction that you've seen the field move over the past several years? Is there any bright spot that you see? So when you say bright spot, you mean is it a, a, a glimmer of hope, possibly? Yeah, a, a glimmer of hope, or something that excites you. See, I left that very open ended. You can be you can be really wishy washy, or you can say, "Oh my God, I saw this piece of equipment." <laughs> Whatever you want to say. I've, I'm starting to see a level of investigator that have have been to a couple of events. They've been doing this for a little while, maybe six months or a year. So it's you know it's been a bit, and they've been and they love going to events. And they love getting out there and rolling up their sleeves and learning. And yet they're now saying, well, okay, well, what's the next step? You know, I, I want to get more involved in this. And they know the basics inside out. They know, you know, you know. I'm using an EMF detector. I've got, I've got an audio recorder. I'm I'm got my video camera ready to go, kind of thing. And and they know why and how and certain techniques. But it's like the well, then now what? Because, you know, I, I want to try different things. And sometimes in between investigations, it can be a bit of a lull, especially if it's over Christmas or anything like that. Sometimes we can't always get out or get to our location where it is. So being able to do things in between as well. And and I'm finding there's this kind of level of investigator that this, their learning is starting to, to, to kind of rise. I guess you could say that word or use that term. And it's, it's learning more about the environment around us, learning about what happens with our brains and what we see and what we don't. I mean, the term pareidolia starts is now becoming very used in the field because people are understanding what happens with our mind and how our minds will trick us into seeing faces in things. You know, I, from a couple of years ago, no one was really using that at all. So it's it, we're starting to, to lift a little bit. I think people are starting to become more curious about explaining things as well and, and the traditional way of investigating, which literally is sitting and observing the environment around. So there's a lot of that too. And I think um, that's been good to see. I'm starting to see that I, I really do love 
um, talking and connecting with people around the world whenever I go to events or anything. And, and usually it's those people. It's like, I've been doing this for a while. And, you know, I, I tried this experiment with infrasound the other day or I tried this and I'm like, oh, wow. And that that is just like lighting a fire. Yeah, I love that. It's just it, I get so excited hearing that because people are trying different things. We don't have to always keep doing the same stuff all the time. You know, basics, great. You've got that. But if you're curious, go and find out more. And that can be based on experience. So if you've you felt like you're really paranoid in, in a, a basement, say, for instance, and you think, well, you know what? I'm going to use my detector for EMF. I'm going to go in there and see what the levels are. Actually, look at that. The levels are at like a 10 or 15 milligauss. And it is milligauss. It's still small. But then they go, right, well, that, that can coincide with the fact that I can feel paranoid or a person can feel paranoid in that level of EMF. Now, everybody, again, is different. Some people are more susceptible to um, fluctuations of EMF or, or certain levels of it than others but you know things like that and then they go well let's do an experiment maybe we'll do, we'll test somebody out in an environment and not tell them that there's high EMF and see what happens or something obviously you know just trying different things and seeing if those reactions happen so it's the learning that comes from the experience A I need to hang out with a better crowd because everything you just described is not my experience at all uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry uh, see, social media is another thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll go back to A, but and also B, I use pareidolia when I speak. I don't always use it when I'm writing because I have to look up the spelling every time. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I do I do like throwing it around when I talk because it makes me sound smart. The okay, <laughs> I love that you're meeting these people that are wanting to learn i'm having trouble getting people to read their camera manual and you're describing people to me that are actually learning it sounds to me like you know the uh, the the em scale uh so that they can differentiate between a microwave oven you know and 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 the actual math equation that comes into natural emf so that that's wonderful now let's go on the inverse are there any trends or recurring experiences that you've come across and every time you see somebody do it you just want to cringe and say stop that just stop it <laughs> oh gosh um i would have to say sometimes how people behave with other investigators and that could be i mean that's kind of like almost like a general society thing to be honest it doesn't have to be exclusive just to investigators but you know it's i'm sure that the stamp collecting um community have have you know bitchy backstabby drama stuff <laughs> as well you know ev everybody does right, you, know, right. you know it's like you stole my stamp you know it you know it it happens everywhere. Um, and I think that's that's probably the one part. I sometimes think, oh, come on, guys, why are we in this for? You know, are we here to nitpick or are we here to, to, to get to learn for ourselves? And, again, it's down to intent. It's, it's not everybody's going to have the same intent. And you could either uh, fire rockets at them on social media or you can go, you know what, that's their thing doesn't have to be mine and that, I think that's where you, if you make that decision that you can actually move on from that kind of drama – um, you end up attracting the kind of people that do want to learn and do, those people just fall away. Um, so I think that would have to be like, oh, man, you know, do you have to? <laughs> Isn't that, that's my, my oh, crap. <laughs> I um, I still go back to I can't believe that you're meeting all these nice people that want to learn. <laughs> um, I mean, I okay, the camera manual, it's not really an exaggeration, but I have had people tell me, you know, when I ask them, what do you do to educate yourself about procedures and equipment and uh, environmental factors, et cetera, et cetera? And I've actually had people that have been in the field years and are still in the field say, well, the best place to learn is in the field. And, yeah. And, you know, and that's like, I'm glad you're not wanting to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> you know, there, there's that little equation there. Mm. Yeah, that can there there is I think that it it can come down to you know again their intent they're happy where they are they they feel they they they're comfortable with, with what they know and you know that that's fine too. Um I think also part of the problem is people don't know where to go. 
people don't know where to find information. And there is great information out there. There's some fantastic institutions, the Rhine Institute, for example, or ASAP, great, great institutions with fantastic information. But some of it can be, like I've mentioned before, it can be eating a lemon. It can make you just squint and go, oh, what is this in Armanic or something? It's just written in a very hard to digest way and and that just can be really off-putting for some people so sometimes just not even knowing where to go to learn more so it's like well you know what i'm happy where i'm at that's cool so now you have obviously taken up on yourself to try to um spread the word to educate people that is (laughs) when you when you arrive at your website it's in your face you know uh, (laughs) learning uh now one of the things that caught my eye um, I'll let you, without blowing your mailing list, um, the I believe it was five aspects of science or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to give us a teaser of what? Um, that's yes. Yes. Well, it's, um, it's a new online course and it covers five topics of science and psychology that investigators sh- should know. And I, I sometimes hesitate in saying that, but I think... If I hadn't known these topics inside out as much as I can, um, I would be a lot slower. Um, I'd be wasting my time on trying to figure out phenomena that could easily be explained. It's a real time saver knowing these types of topics. But as again, sometimes they can be really quite um, techy to understand. They can be quite full of jargon, um, that kind of thing. So to approach it um, off the bat can, I mean, again, if somebody does have an academic background, if they do have a college degree and they can understand the terminology, then that's awesome as well. But there are a lot of investigators who don't. And a lot of investigators learn by seeing and doing. And this is what this course covers. So it's vi- it's tutorials, it's, um, you know, sort of, uh, it's all done by video. So it's going through information, it's showing how things work um and it's these five topics of science and psychology that you can do in a week and once it's one module every day and it's no more than half an hour because hello we've all got lives and a little workbook at the end of each one so no more than about three or four pages and so you can really kind of absorb the information you're getting each and every time and so by one weekend you've purchased the course by the next weekend, you've got an investigation, you're ready to go. And that information can be accessed for 12 months. You can refer back to it. Um, it's also got a. Um, it's also broken down into three sections. So these modules actually are written for investigating. It's not where, here's a poltergeist. Thanks for coming. Oh, this is what a shadow person is. Yay. It's like, all right, now what? What do I do with that? Like, you know, that's great. I know this. Then what happens if you think you've encountered one? What do you do? And then how do you test it out? And this is what this is. This course has actually been written in mind with. And it's sectioned off where the first part is, what is it? So if it's something like infrasound, what is infrasound? The second section is how it affects paranormal investigating. So you know you've got information there that can actually help you understand if it's actually affecting an investigation you're on, in a part of, or off if you're at a historic location and then last one is how to handle it so okay well it it might be infrasound now what do you do well this is how you can detect it this is how you can figure out how it might be affecting things you can try out all this kind of stuff so it's really practical information and i've been a huge fan of that and there's not a lot of that out there lots of theory lots of ideas and that's great but nothing people can actually go i've tried that i've debunked that i've done this this is what this course is about yeah, the uh, the thing I get now. First of all, whenever I'm doing my technical research, which I never do anymore, because I'm not presenting evidence, I don't have to. I'm a radio host. <laughs> the uh, I what I I'm not going to plug the book tonight, but I will tell you, I love the study of the EM spectrum, but mm. it requires math to understand what the device in your hand is actually telling you. Uh, which mm-hmm. is, is not a lot when it gets right down to it, unless you understand the math behind it. And uh, and I'm really crappy at math, so that's what. But so whenever somebody walks up to me at one of these events and shows me some new uh, blinky light thing they've invented, um, and they start explaining, I say, "Okay, pretend I'm a fifth grader, and explain it to me that way." And that that usually works. And there are there is some um, good stuff going on in the field, but. I'm not personally. I'm not sure that we're collating the data mm. in such a way that it's going to have meaning in the long run. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope there is somebody out there a lot smarter than I am 
but it's taking the numbers and doing it right. Uh, but uh, that, that's well, there, one there was of the yeah, there was World Ghost Hunting Day when we were in um in Kentucky for mm-hmm. Scarefest, and all that information over the over that um two hour investigation was pulled together. I think that was a great initiative, and, and like what you say, I think it's 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 it can also be a trust thing as well with groups like handing over this information. It's it's it was almost like handing the keys to a location to of a haunted place, and then you've got all this data. You know, it, sometimes it can be a while to build that trust, but that was a great event, wasn't it, with the World Ghost Hunting Day? It, it was a great idea. Now, I have not followed up with them to find out exactly what was discovered. And, of course, as we discussed, even no data tells us something. You know, mm-hmm. in other words, a failed experiment is still a valid experiment uh, mm. as long as you've got an end goal. But, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I've got to get Brian on the show to um, kind of tell me what uh, was cl- what did turn out from the collection. I got I talked to him about the preliminary stuff and there was some interesting things that we discussed, but I, I do need to um uh get past that. Now, one of your talking points, uh, by the way, everybody, she gave me a PDF <laughs> file uh of her bio and uh and and uh, Beth is a lively and passionate paranormal investigator. Yes, she is. She's a lively and passionate <laughs> person. Uh and 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 everything you've heard about Australians drinking, it's freaking true. Uh, now, uh, one of the things, uh, the stigma is there. Um, that's one thing I can say, except for the stigma that will never go away from the real cynics that just think that we're all wasting our time. Um, as far as the interest in the paranormal, that stigma is pretty much gone by the wayside from my experience here in the states is there still a uh a stigma in australia about admitting your uh cafe is haunted or anything like that unfortunately yeah there is it's it's less and less over the years that i've noticed but it certainly is still very much there there are some venues that um have uh, some really interesting uh, reports of activity but the owners will say well we don't we don't want um anything haunted or, or possibly haunted associated with this particular location especially when it's a business and because um in australia we're being you know close to asia than than most other continents we have um there's also this sort of um people are very careful about saying whether or not their locations do have any uh, possible activity because in a lot of Asian cultures to have a ghost in any location is bad, regardless if it could be your auntie, your uncle or anyone. Um, so they're very, very superstitious. So pe- there's also a little bit of that, I think, as well. There's a, there was one venue that contacted me a couple of months ago and said, we'd, we'd love for you to come out and, and, and investigate this particular place. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place, but um, huge Asian clientele. So I said, well, look, I'm not going to release anything. I'm happy to, but we've got to pick a time when there's nobody there because you don't want to be able to upset anyone. And they were like, you know what, we, we just can't do this anymore. So they there is a little bit of that, but I still think there is a, a definitely a bit of a stigma because it's still got that, oh, oh, you're, you're an investigator for the paranormal. You must believe in ghosts. Ghosts don't exist. And that's how it usually goes. So, um, again, it's slowly changing, but out of all the countries I've ever investigated in, Australia's still got the, the, the most stigma still attached to when it comes to trying to do paranormal investigations. See, now we've went the other way. Now, now you've got people going, my diner's haunted. And hanging a sign on the window, and you know it's a bad air conditioner. And anyway, uh, one last commercial break, and we'll be right back with more with Beth. Tarot by Ken dot com. Unlike other tarot readers, Ken reads multiple spreads during each session to provide you with clear, concise answers and guidance. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a voice on the radio. From Kelly, one reading with Ken completely changed things around for me. Jennifer, I feel so rejuvenated about my life. Melissa, it has changed my life. Visit tarotbyken.com to arrange your own tarot date, or you can call or text Ken at 859-229-4833. And welcome back to the last segment of Paranormal Filler for this evening. Um, Let's talk about belief a little bit, Beth. As a grounded person, First, I want to ask, okay, from your time when you first became active in the field, 
Has your belief in what it is that we are investigating, has it evolved? Has it changed any? It's certainly changed. Um, I think from the point that it's actually, I'm a lot more critical about experiences. I'm a lot more critical about anything from a, from a photo or, or a video or um, from a sound perspective. I'm definitely a lot more um I'm not saying I'm skeptical, but I use the word. Um, definitely a lot more stringent with that sort of thing. But the general passion is still there. Um, I do must admit that when I've had my first experience, that uh, I wasn't able to explain, and still haven't to this day, which is the walking table one. I when you experience something like that, when you've been interested for so long, it actually changes you. Um, I've never looked at the possibility of how the world around us works the same way again. It's it's something where you feel like you've just had a glimpse into something that it's it's you can't explain and, and you know, your mind can wander and as it's wandered for what, eight years now, I think. <laughs> so it's, it's that's probably the one thing that has, has happened in that time from from having a general interest to where I am today. It's is the fact that when you do experience something that is intensely paranormal, possibly paranormal, hasn't been explained yet that stuff does change you and it does make you question how the world around us actually does work. Now, in, in the midst of questioning how things work, what is it that Beth believes? I mean, do you take a fairly traditional view of the things that we are investigating and then call them ghosts? Or are you, has the data you've seen led you to think that's too simplistic where is your belief structure rooted oh good question i get one per show that was it <laughs> it was worth the wait it was worth yes. the wait usually i get it a little oh. earlier on but go ahead <laughs> that's it. and the job is done um wow um that's a huge question too. It's it's. I think it, to me it depends on case by case. But as a general for me, I believe something is going on. We just haven't figured out exactly what it is yet. Now a lot of it, a lot of it can be explained. A lot of the stuff we experience can be explained. Um, I know movies like Paranormal Activity and, and stuff like that is great because it's raised awareness, but now everybody thinks that their cupboard is haunted when it's not. So, it, you know, it keeps me in business, but for the wrong reasons. But I honestly think that there is something going on, whether it is a, that there is life after death, whether there is a consciousness or, or something that's left behind, energy that's left over, if people want to throw out thermodynamics, although there's a real contradiction with that as well because energy when the body decomposes actually does go that's a whole other story um you know it's very um i love I that you be- pointed that out by the way go ahead yeah <laughs> <laughs> right. i know it's it's you know, energy doesn't die it changes form it's like yeah but it depends on what environment and the energy does get used up when your body actually decomposes that's what's one really cool thing about where i live by the way is i am um, probably about a 40 minute drive from what we call a body farm and it's only just kind of in the last 12 months started up and what it is is they actually have people who donate their um relatives who've passed over into this to to be dumped out in this vast bushland to decompose so they could study how a body decomposes how cool is that (laughs) anyway it's completely (laughs) we do things differently in australia i I just hope there's a good fence because every time deer season goes around uh my dog my yard is littered with deer parts from my dogs i can just imagine living a mile from a body farm what would end up in my front yard oh my god so yeah we're a strange bunch of people here but um <laughs> it's so so yeah i think there's definitely something happening we just haven't discovered what it is yet if it is you know um the fact that we can pick up you know, people's what's happening in their mind in their energy or whatever it is or is there something else that's happening that we're so in tune with how we are as people and so evolved that we can actually you know there are things that we haven't discovered about the brain yet that you know i mean there's there are things something like xenoglossia where you can actually never you can actually speak fluently of a language that you've never studied before you know and that sometimes you know could be thrown in if someone is possibly deemed to be demonically possessed you know but yet there's actually a, a, a psychological term for it and it actually is something that can happen to people you know they wake up with a different accent if they bump their head all this kind of stuff so there's just so much we don't know and i think that i for me the paranormal sits in there i just love trying to figure out what it is 
just reminded me uh, a comment you made before about a, a ghost in every cupboard. Uh, we see <laughs> we've evolved past that in the states. Now we have a demon in every attic. And oh yeah, because of the, the D word itself. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's what we got going on here. Uh, Beth, we're we've uh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, let's get the plugs in again, everybody. I cannot recommend highly enough to go to accessparanormal.com. I just cannot recommend it enough. Um, no. Check out. Uh, I put it this way. Read the blog, and if you are wanting to learn more about the paranormal, you will want to get the um, the online study course. I have no doubt in my mind. Thank you. <laughs> and... Um, then you got a Facebook page too, uh, Access Paranormal, I believe. Is that how? I That's found right. That? Yes, I did find That's that by ex- typing in Access Paranormal. You liked it today, thank you. <laughs> I did, and I did all the yes, I did all my research today. That is, <laughs> yes. that is pretty much good. the way things work around here. Um, anything else you want to plug before I let you get off the air? Um, just um, I'm actually going to be uh, the voiceover artist for the Kling Brothers. They've coming back with. Um, they used to be in a show called Ghost Lab, and mm-hmm. I'll be voicing their new show, GL Revolution. So if you want to jump onto their Facebook page, that's GL Revolution, and also the Kling Brothers page as well to find out. They're in the middle of filming. They're filming all over Texas at the moment, and it's just. I mean, I get snippets of stuff here and there, and they're it's so exciting the things that they're coming across. So yeah, by all means, head over to their page and give them a like as well to keep up to date with all that too okay before i let you go and before you become famous for doing the voiceover for them (laughs) i want i would love for you to say between science and ignorance there is filler paranormal filler between science and ignorance there is paranormal filler now that was close between science and ignorance, there is filler. That's the important part. See, that's the tagline. Ah. The filler's the uh, important part. Between science and ignorance, there is filler. Between science and ignorance, there is filler. God, I hope that came out clean on the archive. Everybody, thanks so much for listening. <laughs> Beth, it's been great uh, talking to you again, and I cannot wait to see that's you again today. Right. Uh, yes. at Scarefest this year. And uh, are, you, are, are you doing the, the full road trip again this year? You're going to have to uh, do it like it's normal. I'm going to, I'm, I'm actually, there's, a, there's probably another event that's after Scarefest the next weekend that I'm, I'm actually eyeing off at the moment. So I'm going to see if I can make it a, a, a sort of a two week thing as well. So fingers crossed, I might be going to another event as well as Scarefest. Ooh, fingers crossed. Also, just quickly before we go, Tina, also based here in Australia, says that you have an amazing accent as well. So there you go. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Australia, thank you for your support. And everybody, you've been listening to...